Thank you, Matt, for joining me today. I wanted to call you so that we could have a bit of a chat about Nest MI. We've been using it in the factory in Suolati now for many years, but I think maybe some of our farmers still have some questions around what exactly Nest MI is uh, and what it does and, and how it can benefit them. But first, perhaps you could introduce yourself and your background to let people know who you are. Yeah, and first of all, thanks for inviting me. Great, great to be here. Uh, so yeah, my name is Mats Hultman and I work as head of OEM partnerships at Neste. And that means that I orchestrate the partnerships between Neste and uh, vehicle producers, basically. And uh, those partnerships consists of many different areas. So it can be R&D, it can be joint work on legislation topics uh, or joint business together. So it's, uh, yeah. A wide mix of topics and of course including many of my colleagues also at, at Nestle. Okay, fantastic. Thank you. I suppose the first question that farmers may have is what exactly is Nestle MI? Yeah, so Nestle MI Renewable Diesel uh, is a HVO100 product. So Renewable Diesel and HVO100 is exactly the same thing. So this can be a little bit confusing and it's uh, depending on where you are in the world. Uh, some areas uses more the HVO100, typically in Europe, whereas in US it's more commonly known as renewable diesel. And it's a, it's a product made of 100% renewable raw materials, and it, uh, it's a product that could be used in any, any diesel engine to, to make it more sustainable. Okay, when, when you say HVO, could you just clarify what HVO stands for? Yeah, so HVO stands for hydro-treated vegetable oils but we're actually making it mainly from waste and residues. Uh, so that's also sort of can give a little bit wrong impression. Okay, but uh, renewable diesel is an easy, easy phrase to, to remember. How does renewable diesel differ from, let's say, uh, fossil diesel, uh, but also, um, say, biodiesel? I think I've heard those two phrases uh, before. So how does renewable diesel differ? Yeah, th that's an excellent question. So if you look at the chemical composition, renewable diesel or HVO100 is a, basically a chemical copy of the fossil diesel, but it has no aromatics and aromatics are bad for you. They're cancerogenic and they cause the sp uh, smoke and so on. So, so it's positive not to have those aromatics. So you could say that it's sort of a it's a, a premium product uh, compared to, to fossil diesel. And then if we compare it to biodiesel, which is something completely different, uh, biodiesel is also a biofuel. So I, I, this can be a bit confusing, but if you compare then renewable diesel and biodiesel, there are quite big differences where uh, renewable diesel is a drop-in product that can be used anywhere. It doesn't have any oxygen in it. So there's no problem with, go uh, with growth in the tank or uh, clogging up oil filters or anything like that. It works excellent in cold conditions. Whereas biodiesel, also good for the environment, but it causes some challenges for the user. Uh, so uh, because biodiesel has oxygen in it, for example, so you can have the problem with growth uh, in the tank or clogging up filters and all that. It can also have some cold performance issues. So these two products are typically very often mixed up so we can talk to customers and say, yeah, I tried that. It didn't work. I had so many problems. Mm. Then you tried biodiesel or Farme or RME has many names. But uh, if you go for HVO 100 or renewable diesel, that's really a premium product. So the experience we hear from users in that case is more that, oh, it worked even better than running on pure fossil diesel or B0 diesel. So uh, it's really a, a nice product to work with. So if I understand correctly, then it's, it's quite a clean product. So it's like a kind of a chemical match to diesel, but without the, uh, aromatics, the kind of bad stuff that, that fossil diesel has, has in it. Does yeah. that mean then it, that it burns cleaner? Yeah. So it, it burns really clean. I have a, a sample here. I'm not sure how well you can see it, but it looks almost like a water. Still, yeah. you, should, you shouldn't drink it, <laughs> but even from smelling it and handling it, it it's a much, much nicer pro product. Uh, and if you burn this and you compare it with fossil diesel, so if you burn fossil diesel, you have black smoke coming out. Mm. And when you burn this, it burns really clean. Uh, so we even had a, um, 
an interesting case in the beginning with uh, the companies working on these uh, heating systems uh, to, to heat cabins and different things uh, that th they detect the flame with the optical sensor. And when they put HVO in it, it was really hard to detect the flame because it burned so clean. So they had to adjust uh, their setting uh, to adopt it for HVO. After that, it was no problem, but it just shows how, how clean it burns actually. Okay, so does that mean that it's actually kind of uh, beneficial to the engine? Um, thinking about if it's burning cleaner, is there kind of like less uh, deposits in the engine or less of the bad stuff to, to deal with? Yeah, it, it works nice in the engine and uh, it uh, creates a lot less suits. Uh, although, I mean, modern engines with the after treatment system so are quite advanced already to take care of this. So it might be as a use, user, you don't see much of it. If, if you have an older equipment, I think you will see more of the benefits compared to if you have a new modern engine. Uh, so I would say for the users, you, you will probably experience it even more if you, if you put it in an, an older equipment. And, and it is compatible with all diesel engines, isn't it? So there's, there's uh, no issue whether they've got a, a new Veltra tractor or, or an older one they should be able to use in SDMI. Yeah, so, so it works in all diesel engines and uh, wherever you have sort of a diesel engine, whether it's in your tractor or generator and so on, it, it can be used. So it's, uh, yeah, it it's really has the same properties as, as the fossil diesel. Excellent. Thank you. So we've talked a little bit about um, different options. You've mentioned, uh, well, with fossil diesel, uh, farmers are probably well uh, familiar with. We mentioned uh, biodiesel and HVO 100 or the renewable diesel. And also uh, farmers may have questions around electrification. There's kind of lots of different uh, options uh, around. Why, why do we need so many options? And uh, why or how does Nest MI benefit or, or stand, stand different to, to the other options that are on the market? Yeah, there is really a need for multiple options here. And we see that there's so much fossil oil being used in the world today. And a sm small part of it is being replaced by electric vehicles, for example, and so on. But to, to really phase out the fossil fuel, which is sort of the end goal, uh, all of these solutions will be needed. And also, if we look at the climate commitments, it's clear that uh, there's not a single solution that will get us there. Mm -hmm. And also, th the solutions, I mean, they're fit for different purposes. So it could be that one area is really easy to electrify. I said, let's do it then. But some areas are much harder, uh, and then we need other solutions. Uh, and there, I think, uh, renewable diesel plays a really important role. So it's clear that we will need these multiple solutions and we're sort of we're not against any of the others. We're also building charging networks and looking into different solutions. But it, I think this is one where you could do something already today. You don't need any new infrastructure. You can use your existing filling tanks and so on. So the investment costs, cost and the sort of ease of, of just starting up is the threshold is really low compared to many of these other solutions. Mm. Whereas if you were to set up a new hydrogen tank or get the new electricity or sort of uh, a new charging station in place and so on, th that typically creates some investments and in some cases it's not even possible due to the infrastructure uh, set up and so on. So with this one, the threshold to get going is, is really low. It's really, really kind of like... Um... To, to borrow a phrase from elsewhere, a kind of plug and play solution. You can really yeah. just fill up your tank with an SMI renewable diesel and get to work. And I, I think also with the higher horsepower tractors, uh, I think um, there may be, let me put it this way, I think the internal combustion engine is going to be around for a while for the higher horsepower tractors in our case. And uh, those tractors will be able to to run on SMI renewable diesel from, from day one. So we know that uh, this is better for the environment. How much better is it? So if a farmer's looking to reduce their carbon footprint, what are we talking about? Is it reducing by a few percentage points or, or is it a significant benefit? Yeah, so it is really a significant uh, benefit here. It's uh, on average 90% greenhouse gas reduction. And that's really a high number. Uh, so when we look at cars and trucks, it's equal to running an electric battery electric vehicle on green electricity which is most often not the case because the electricity make, the electricity mix is not that good 
Uh, so it really compares with the best solutions available. Uh, and yeah, really competitive, I, I would say, in, the, in that case, and especially since it doesn't need any special investments. And as I mentioned, we make it mainly from waste and residues. So I have some examples with me here, like uh, used cooking oil okay. and also uh, animal fats. So it's really taking care of, of waste uh, and, and using it to make, make fuel. Uh, and that's also how we achieve the big greenhouse gas reduction value. Yeah, and I, I guess uh, also those are waste products. So they would be just without uh, this secondary use, they would be just going to waste. So there's uh, kind of keeping it in a, in a closed loop system, I guess, that uh, able to use those, those waste products. Yeah, definitely. I mean, some of them have uh, like could be used for diff could you be used for just burning it up for heating or something like that but mm. i think it makes more sense to to make this type of, of fuel out of them uh, and also uh, i think the, the big difference here is that we're not adding any co2 to the atmosphere when using these type of raw materials because compared to when you have uh, fossil fuel you take oil out of the ground and you make diesel or gasoline out of it and you burn it and you add co2 to the atmosphere with this one, where we use um, renewable raw materials, uh, they have absorbed CO2 during life. There is a product made of them, and then it's waste. Uh, and we take that waste and burn it in an engine. And yes, we release CO2 when we burn it, but it's not new CO2. We're just circulating CO2 uh, here. So that is the big uh, big difference. Uh, you could almost compare it to a tree. Like when a tree grows, it absorbs CO2. And when it dies, it falls to the ground and rottens and emits that CO2 back. Now we're not using trees, but you could take that basically waste or dead tree and make fuel out of it. And, and that would be the same thing that you're sort of just circulating the CO2. And that's basically how, how all type of uh, biofuel works. Uh, so. Yeah. And I, I guess also fossil fuel is a finite resource. Uh, it uh, won't last forever. Whereas... Um, if we're reusing materials, then that's a kind of circular economy and uh, there's a, a chance to uh, um, not run out of, of a finite resource in that instance. Thinking if a farmer is interested in using Nestemi renewable diesel, but maybe they're not sure how to get it in their, in their local country, is there a way that they can find out where their nearest supplier is and, and how to go about ordering Nestemi renewable diesel? Yeah, so if, if, if you log on to our webpage, neste.com, uh, up in the right-hand corner, there's a region uh, where you can go to your specific region and, uh, or country, uh, and you can then select a, a renewable diesel and then where to find fuel. And you will both find a map of all the sort of public filling stations, but there's also a list of distributors that can come and fill up your tank at home. Uh, so that's, uh, I would say, the easiest way on how to get fuel. And of course, you're welcome to reach out to us also if you have questions uh, or where to find it and so on. Uh, but I, I would say that's the easiest way to start with. And typically we have uh, different partners to work with. So uh, if you're in Finland or the Baltic countries, uh, you will get the product directly from Nesta. But in the rest of the world, uh, we work with channel partners or distribution partners that help uh, distribute our pro product. So I think that would be the easiest way. And maybe also I can highlight that uh, uh, the product mixes with fossil uh, diesel without any problem. So if you have, for example, already fuel in the tank or something like that, you, you, can, you can mix it. It can be mixed 50-50 or 10-90 or whatever. It mixes with the fossil and... Uh, for example, if you would not be able to get the product, you could always like switch back for, for a week until you get the product or something like that. So it creates also a very big flexibility for the user. But of course, to get the best greenhouse gas reduction, you should be using the 100% product, of course. Yeah, yeah, of course. But uh, if, if in a tight spot, it doesn't matter if you fill up your tank once with fossil diesel to get you to the next delivery or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah that, 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 that's a big benefit. Um, so there's... Like you said, the zero uh, investment in new infrastructure uh, compared to some other um, solutions. And at the end of the day, you can mix, uh, mix and match uh, in that situation if you need to. I think that's 
covered many things pretty well. Is, is there anything on your mind that uh, you'd like to say to our farmers or, or anything that I've missed in my questions? Yeah, maybe just highlighting that it, that it is safe to use and it's, it's uh, all approved and recommended by, <laughs> by Valtra. And we, we have been working together for many years, all the way back in uh, 2017, we started collaborating and uh, the tractors come even when you buy a new tractor, it comes pre-filled with Nestemai renewable diesel, uh, which is really cool. And we've been doing this for many years now. So I think in total about 5 million liters has been used. So it's really not just us saying it. We, we we are proving that that it works in the tractors there's it's safe to use yeah um, that's a very good yeah. point actually as you said i think last year we crossed the five million liter mark and we've been using it consistently for all of our first fields and the testing and also our um, diesel operated forklift trucks that are outside in, in the factory and uh, i think I think off the top of my head, it's prevented something like 15,000 tons of greenhouse gas from being released to the atmosphere if you compare it to using fossil fuel for that time. And uh, just, just for the, our farmer's reference, that's uh, equivalent to using a T-series under 30 to 40% engine load for 390,000 hours, which uh, as a farmer, they'll know how much they're using their tractors. Uh, they can do the math as to how many years uh, uh, carbon or how many years um, greenhouse gas emissions that, that equates to for them. Yeah, very, very good. I think uh, I don't have anything else to add unless you can think of anything. No, I think we covered most of it. And as, as you mentioned, uh, always welcome to reach out to us also uh, if you have any questions uh, here. So we're here to, to help. Thank you. Um, so what, what we'll do is we'll pop that link that you mentioned to finding the distributor. We'll, we'll put a direct link to that into the comments uh, of this video so that, or into the uh, uh, description as well so that people can find it uh, very easily. And uh, if anyone watching does have any questions, please feel free to pop them into the chat below and uh, either Voltra or Nesta, we'll, we'll get back to you one way or the other uh, and be happy to answer the questions. Thank you very much for your time today, Mats. I think it's been really useful and really uh, informative. Yeah, look forward to speaking to you again. Yeah, thanks. And thanks again for inviting us. Thank you. Bye-bye.